So how grateful are you that uh, Patty Fisher, um, a guy who some people thought would maybe opt out with a lot of the other kind of top guys out there, um, decided to, to come back and anchor that linebacking group? Well, we're excited because obviously he's an excellent outstanding football player and he's a great leader for us. So, you know, we're excited that he wanted to play because we're excited that we're getting to play. And, uh, you know, it certainly helps when a young man like that says, I want to play too. And, you know, it's providing great leadership by doing that. Dave Bennett. Hey coach, Dave Bennett. Um, so you had, I think, something like 13 sacks, 24 TFLs from Gaziano and Alex Miller combined. Where do those come from now, or is it you just get them by committee? Well, we have to do a better job of putting our players in position, but we have, I think, we've seen some excellent development of our young players. And I think that we can replace those, you know, and uh, we, we need to do a better job as coaches getting them, getting them in that position uh, because that's one area where we felt like we need to do a better job affecting the quarterback and getting more takeaways. So, um, you know, we worked hard at trying to do some things, but, you know, I've seen improvement in Ernest Brown and, you know, Eku is improving all the time. Jason Gold shows made some good plays last year, but he's, you know, we feel like he's very much improved and, uh, you know, Trevor Kent, Tommy Adebawari. So I, I've seen the improvement in those guys and, you know, I, it's their turn to step up like Joe did and Alex did. So we feel good about what we have up with our front seven there. Eli? Eli? <clears throat> hey coach, Eli Carp from Inside and You. So, Fitz is sitting on 99 wins right now. You've been here for the majority of his tenure. How have you seen him change as a, as both a coach and a leader since he took the job when he was in his, you know, early thirties? He's done a great job in my estimation. You know, I've been fortunate. I've worked with some hall of fame coaches, but he, he's, he just continues to grow a little, but, you know, I think it's his overall, uh, the way he instilled, leads the coaches, the way he leads the players. Uh, you know, he's got some core values that he believes in and we, and he preaches them consistently and, you know, and he does a, does a great job in recruiting. You know, he works his tail off at those things and it's obvious, but he's, uh, he's so organized. He's th always looking ahead and what we need to do better or what other people are doing. And so we, we try to, kind of stay ahead of the curve that way. And, um, but I, I, I'm very, I, I can't tell you how impressed I am working for him. And he's a great guy to work for too, the way he treats us. Ella, go ahead. Hi coach, I'm Ella Brockway from the Daily Northwestern. Where, in comparison to where you would normally be in like a normal time frame, normal season, a week or like a week and a half out before uh, the start of the season, where would you guys say you are like physical preparedness, mental preparedness, stuff like that? It's, it's been a challenge with the, the restrictions we had early that we couldn't be in pads and we couldn't really work against each other. So we're, we may be a little behind in the physical aspect, but mentally we've, we've really pushed hard uh, to get our football stuff installed. And I like where we're at mentally. Um, the speed of the game is always a concern because we haven't been able to do as much physical work and, you know, you haven't been able to scrimmage like we might have, even though it would have been limited, but we feel like we've, uh, we've tried to research it and do things to compensate for it. And I, I like where we're at, you know, no, we'll have to see you in the game. Obviously that'll be the real test. Anything else for Coach Hank? What's that? Dave, go ahead. Coach, uh, 51 years, I believe, this year for you. <laughs> what does that number mean to you? Uh, I don't know that it means anything unique. Uh, 
I'm still doing it because I love the game and I love the working with the players and I love the accomplishment we have when we all work together and win. And I've been fortunate to have been on a number of championship teams. And, uh, you know, that feeling is hard to replace because when you win and you win it, especially when you win a championship, it takes everybody contributing scout team, every, every player contributes a role to that winning that championship. And, you can't ever take it away from them. And, uh, you know, I mean, some of my fondest memories are players that basically were scout players for most of the, almost all their whole career, but they stuck it out. They helped us win and they took great pride in it. And when they, they wore that ring with as much pride as anybody else, because they knew they were an integral part of that championship. And, uh, you know, I never, I don't, Think about 51 years, you know, um, but it's goes back to 1970, you know, that's, that's a while back coaching, you know, and uh, seeing a lot of different things in college football, but that's part of the fun, the way the game has changed offenses, defenses. Um, you know, when I first started, we had 120 guys in scholarship. Then I went to 105, then I went to 95, then I went to 85. So you've had to make adjustments all along and then, to see the evolution of offenses. Um, when I started, it was the eye formation and the wishbone. Then I went to 11 personnel, three wide receivers, a tight end. Then I went to the spread, you know, and then the running quarterback. So it's been fun and it's been a challenge in coaching to uh, stay ahead of the game or, you know, keep adjusting, keep adapting to the innovations and, uh, you know, that's part of the fun of it, obviously. Louis, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Louis Vicare with uh, wildcatreport.com. Um, you've got a veteran unit, obviously, this year. Lots of returning starters, lots of seniors. D does that make your job easier? And what's your biggest challenge coaching these guys? Well, I do think it makes our job easier because we've got an excellent core of veteran the guys would have been seniors, you know, Patty, Joe Berg, and Blake Gallagher, uh, Ernie Brown, Jr. Um, you know, we've had a, a number of other guys that played a lot of football. Then I alluded to the fact that we've had young guys that develop, so it does make it easier. Um, but we have to be mindful that you know we got to have a, we got to have more than just our starting guys ready because in this unique year. You know, you're going to have to play with some young guys. So we've worked hard to get them ready. But I, it does help when you have a strong group of older players that give you great leadership. And we're excited that we have those guys. And they've done a great job so far. Ben? Hey, Coach. Ben Chasen with Inside NU. Um, how do you prepare for a team like Maryland that not only hasn't announced a starting quarterback this close to the start date, but also – has neither quarterback with much of any college tape whatsoever. Um, yeah, just that. Well, we think they're going to run their base offense. Um, they had an athletic quarterback last year, and two of the projected starter fits right into that mold. So, you know, we're, we feel like we're, the, the main things they did last year are things we're going to see. And, yeah, there's some unknowns there, but, um, you know, the – Key is we have to be fundamentally sound and we have to be able to execute our defense and not shoot ourselves in the foot, and make mistakes and, you know, make them beat us. They, they, they will are in the same boat. They've had the same challenges of not being able to do everything you, know, you could in a normal camp. So it isn't like they have a tremendous edge on us, but, um, you know, we feel like the, the main things they did last year fit into what, the projected quarterback's going to be. So that's what we're planning on. Drew. Hey, Coach. Drew Shaw from the Daily Northwestern. Um, you were earlier speaking about the seniors um, and the upperclassmen on this team and kind of their importance and skill um, that they bring to the program. Can you talk a little bit about any underclassmen and younger guys who have kind of shown promise and skill during training camp, if any? I'm, we're excited about the growth of our young players, um, especially the ones I alluded to, you know, Echo Leota and uh, Jason Gold and Tommy Adebawari, um, you know, uh, Cam Ruiz, guys that were young last year, but got a lot of great experience. Uh, you know, Chris Bergen basically 
well, he started some the year before, but last year for, you know, full year starter and he's gotten better. Um, and we, we've seen some young, some of our younger players, uh, freshmen and incoming guys that we're very excited about now. They're still in, they're still got work to do, but we're really excited about them. Um, there's a number I'm more excited about. I uh, hate to single somebody out, but uh, you know, we, I like our young players. We really do.